Uh, this is my uh, second battle in Theater of War. Uh, still on September the 1st, 1939. Um, I will be commanding Polish forces, defending against the uh, German onslaught. This might take a minute to load. Maybe I should have waited a minute before pressing record. But I didn't want to miss any of the, uh, there's a, a bit of a cutscene at the beginning. This is actually the first mission the, uh, in the Polish campaign in Theater of War. Uh, the first, first mission I played was a standalone mission. And for some reason, my computer's freaking, freaking out a little bit as it loads this up. However, that shouldn't be visible to you, since this is OBS is just recording this window. But on my end, the window's flickering a little bit every now and then. Loading up a lot of information. All right, here we go. German forces lined up there. Panzer one in the middle. Now, I do not want to underestimate the Panzer one. It is, I mean, it is definitely not the best tank the Germans have. In fact, definitely the worst tank they have, armed only with machine guns. But I don't have any tanks on my end either, or I, I don't have any tanks on my end. No armored vehicles on the field to start. Uh, so machine guns are plenty to deal with what I got. And, uh, you know, Panzer II may be better than a Panzer I, but a Panzer I is better than no tank at all. Okay. So, yeah, there's... I have... Not a whole lot of troops, just a, a couple of squads of infantry. And a handful of AT guns, actually a fairly respectable number of AT guns. Um, considering I only have a couple of sections of infantry here. Uh, I have, I guess, kind of two lines of trenches. These ones here are kind of back in... They're not really able to uh, take advantage of the high ground or support the first line. But they are in reverse slope positions. That'll be useful for closing the range. I do have reinforcements coming. Uh, so the reinforcements, I'm thinking, are going to take up positions in the rear trenches. I will leave the rear trenches empty for now. And deploy my AT guns. I have... Five AT guns in total. Okay. Okay. Two of them are these big ol' honkin' uh, 75mm boys. Um, FGWZ 
1897. So, uh, first designed and produced well before, I think 1897, the, the the naming convention, whenever there's a date attached to a piece of equipment, I think that's the date it entered service. So this gun entered service before there was such a thing as a tank, so this was originally a field gun, not an anti-tank gun, because there were no tanks when this first came into service. But it has since been adapted quite admirably as an anti-tank gun. It's got this uh, armor-piercing, high-explosive ammunition that's uh, been produced for it, and I've got 38 rounds in this gun. Uh... Yeah, 38 rounds in both of these guns. The other kind of gun I have... The smaller... Bofors WZ-36. Model 1936. So this is uh, a much more modern, recently adapted... Uh, recently accepted gun. Smaller. Uh, obviously, by this point, designed explicitly to be an anti-tank gun. Got a little bit less penetration than the uh, than a bigger 75 millimeter cousin, but it'll still be plenty adequate to punch through even Panzer III armor at this at this point in time. Of course, later Panzer III's will get armor going up to 50 millimeters. Right now, the early stage of the war, the frontal armor is only like 30 millimeters, which means this will be able to barely punch through at 1,000 meters and comfortably punch through at 500 meters. So, distance to that tree line there. You can kind of see the ranges. The bar jumps up and down here as I move the mouse further out. So, distance to that tree line from its current position is eh, a hair above 500 meters, 600 meters or so. So, these should be able to comfortably penetrate Panzer III armor and will, will not struggle at all with Panzer II or Panzer I armor. Even so, if I can get them into positions, I'll get flank shots. Okay, start actually positioning these things. Generally, with anti-tank guns, you want as small a gun as you can get away with. Um, bigger guns will, will be able to produce higher chamber pressures, uh, get a higher velocity round coming out and get more penetration, but they are also bigger, which makes them harder to conceal, and also they tend to be more expensive, meaning you can't produce as many of them. So the smallest AT gun that will get through the armor that you're anticipating uh, facing, you can produce more of those, and they'll have an easier time uh, getting concealment. Now, I don't... I'm not terribly familiar with the mechanics of this, of uh, Theater of War as compared to combat mission. I am assuming these bushes will provide some concealment. Uh, there's not really anywhere that'll provide any cover for these guns. But yes, I think I want the smaller caliber Bofors, uh model 1936 guns up front here, just behind each of these trenches. Actually... these bushes do provide a fair amount of concealment, maybe I could put it a little bit in the rear, have, them, have it facing that way, and side shoot tanks that, that climb over these trenches here, and kind of do the same with this gun, have it facing this way. Yeah, not really good. What I'd want if it's doing that, it's to be completely concealed from from this direction and have clear uh, clear lines of fire and anything coming up this way. Where what I'd like would be able to fire, yeah, my gun on the right to be able to fire kind of on this field and my gun on the left to be able to fire on this field here. Increase the probability of side shots, reduce the amount of enemy guns that are pointing back towards uh, my AT guns to take them out. I'm not sure the terrain is really going to permit that kind of strategy here. Much. There's somewhere where I can 
put this gun that'll be concealed from this direction, but provide a clear field of fire over this way. Uh, this position doesn't do that. I'm not sure there's... Well, this position, maybe. Well, that's almost... This is far enough to the left that it's almost looking straight into them again. Okay, now, front, front facing is good enough. These... These guns can punch through the frontal armor of the tanks we'll be facing. They are up to the task. So, the question then is how to position these last three guns. I think I want the bigger ones further back in the rear. Their penetration it is effective at longer ranges anyway, so it makes sense to have them way back in the rear. Uh, I should figure out what to do with this gun. Any gun. I think I want to micromanage the placement of each of my infantry. Because there is an artillery barrage that's going to be opening up. It'll be a little bit better protected. Yeah, if they're in each of those little hidey holes there. Which is probably where they're supposed to be doctrinally anyway. There aren't quite enough of those for all of them to be in one, but... Uh, Give them the best protection we can get. The game does somewhat underrepresent the amount of infantry that should be on the field and overrepresent the, the number of tanks that should be on the field. So, well, in reality, uh, probably infantry would be the biggest threat, and then the tanks would be sort of augmenting and uh, increasing that threat. Here, I think that the main threat really is almost entirely the enemy tanks, and then the enemy infantry are going to be providing a little extra nuisance. ATU rifles. They're not worth nothing. Definitely, yeah, below 100 meters, they should be able to punch through the frontal armor of a Panzer, uh, Panzer III, and should have no trouble punching through Panzer II and I armor. Um, not really much good against anything at much beyond 100 meters. Of course, I get, I get the data on the armor penetration in 500 meter increments, so for all I know, it could perform adequately against Panzer IIs at 200 meters. I don't know, I don't have that data. Uh, but for sure, at 100 meters or less, it'll be effective. The main thing is, I want to make sure it doesn't keep him down and in his hidey hole and not shooting until the enemy vehicles are within effective range which I am going to count as 100 meters away. Yeah, about, about when they pass that line of bushes, I will allow my anti-tank riflemen to open fire. My infantry, I want to keep down until most of the tanks are eliminated and the enemy infantry gets up nice and close. Uh, okay. It's gotta be... Well, if I can't get optimal protection for all of them, I can at least make sure they have good spacing. And... I don't want a bit of a reserve back here behind the front trench. That's probably an adequate spacing. Spacing is important. I don't want to lose multiple troops to the same artillery shell. We don't have any dugouts to hide in. Um, but still, I want, to, I want them to have to expend as many shells as possible for every casualty inflicted. Right, back to placing the anti-tank guns. Um, 
figure out what to do with these two last. Um, I do pretty much know... Wait, yeah, let's actually read the briefing. Hold and defend specified area. So, yeah, they're, they're going to be coming straight at me. Pressing their advance on three fronts. Okay, that's the overall strategic situation, not that relevant to the specific tactical situation here. Um, so yeah, just hold the area. We do pretty much know they are going to be coming from the front here. They might, some of them, come from these sides here. But it's not a terribly complicated scenario. Yeah, I think if I place you there, you should have a pretty clear line of fire on tanks approaching down the left field. The rise in the terrain should protect you from tanks tanks coming down the right. Yeah, I think I think I like that position there. Hopefully that's an adequate amount of concealment. Again, I'm not intimately familiar with these game mechanics. I don't know to what extent these bushes actually do provide concealment and to what extent they're just aesthetic. Um, but I figure might as well treat them as if they provide concealment and if they don't, oh well, I've lost nothing. Um, right, I'm still figuring out what to do with you. I put you in up front with the other with the other two of your caliber. Maybe I have one kind of in the back ready to side shoot enemy enemy tanks that these front two miss. There's ways that could go wrong. I mean there's ways that could go very, very right. The enemy tanks overrun the position. And then they end up taking shells in the side. Of course, the way this could go wrong is the enemy infantry come out front and reach this position before any enemy tanks come by, in which case the gun just gets overrun by enemy infantry and never gets a shot off at enemy tanks. Whereas if it was facing front, it would have at least had a chance to get some shots off at enemy tanks and probably would have taken out a few. Yeah, I could place it up here and just augment my front-facing firepower. That's probably not a bad way to use it. It would have a pretty asymmetric amount of firepower on the left side as opposed to the right side if I did that, though. I'd like to put in a spot where I can... Uh... Well, okay, I think... Uh... Put this gun in kind of that, uh, tempting to get some inflating fire. Or can I do the same with this gun? Or a rise in the terrain I can exploit to protect it from enemy attacks in one direction while opening up a... somewhere I can get some fire direction there. This slant to this hill is pretty heavily favoring uh, angles that'll provide concealment from there and openings over there. Well, maybe this bush, but that's outside of the deployment zone. Yeah. Could set up over here. It'll have clear fire fields of fire on the left, but uh, not so clear on the right. Of course, then again, maybe packing all my AT firepower onto one flank might not be the wrong move, because then we we get overkill on this flank. 
and then maybe tanks coming in on this flank walk into a kill zone. Might might that work? How could I exploit that if that's what I did? Yeah, get overkill on the left flank, and then when the enemy overruns the right, they'll crawl up along here, and then maybe this guy has an opportunity for side shots on tanks coming up this way. It's a possibility. Or, central position. Trees are mostly concealing the right. I need a little bit of... Ooh, you know, this might... I mean... It'll be frontal... And it, the enemy will be to its front rather than being able to get side shots, but... And so the barrel, the, the line of sight there does come up over the, the hill. I think so. I'm gonna have to move it forward if I don't have to. Oh, I don't have a zoom feature, do I? Actually, if I could get it like hull down to the extent that hull down is a concept that even applies to things that don't have hulls. Um, I need a line of sight tool of some sort to make sure that I can that it can actually shoot over the crest of that hill. I want this thing to have the best cover I can give it and still be able to shoot at the enemy. Is that gaining any concealment value from that bush? Probably not. I have to go back a little further. But then it for sure wouldn't be able to crest over there. Oh, it could Went back a little... No, that's still providing overkill on the left flank. I think I'm coming around. I want... I want to pr provide good effect to both the left and the right flank. Hmm. Let's start back here a little ways, and then push it up a little bit. Yeah. If I can't see anything from here, I'll push it up a little ways when the battle starts, but for now, I'm going to keep that position. Okay, so this AT gun. Am I happy with that spot there, or do I want to move it? Will the plan of getting, trying to get flank shots actually work? Or will this backfire somehow? Maybe this bush is a better hiding spot. Yeah, I'm gonna go with this bush. It's a little further back, so somewhat... or maybe this bush. Yeah, a little bit further back, so reduced chance that enemy tanks are gonna roll behind the gun. And they will expose their flanks a little bit more. Hopefully this wall of bushes here will provide good concealment. The enemy doesn't see the gun until they have explo exposed their their vulnerable side armor. And if that doesn't work, I still have four front-facing AT guns that should be able to provide good effect. Hmm. It's possible the better plan would have been to augment my front-facing firepower and just put, put it in one of these bushes here.
could just get taken out by artillery. I'm gonna keep it that way. Yeah. There may be better plans, but this is a good plan. Don't, don't let the perfect plan become the enemy of a good plan. And this will be effective. Even if not necessarily optimal. Okay. Is any more... All these orders are grayed out. Okay. Okay, so you guys stay where you are. Stay down. Alright, there's the German tanks coming in. Panzer II, or Panzer II's invasion of Poland. Most of the German armor coming in would have been uh, light tanks, Panzer II's and Panzer I's. By the, you know, they, they had to, you know, a few of the medium tanks, Panzer III's, Panzer IV's. By the invasion of France, the ratio would have been more 50 50. About half their tanks would have been. Uh, the light tanks, and then the other half would have been the medium variants. Then by inv the invasion of the Soviet Union, most of the tanks would have been Panzer threes and fours, with a few Panzer ones and twos. And some of the Panzer threes, I believe, by then were already upgraded to the 50 centimeter, 50 millimeter gun. A 50 centimeter gun would be insane. Then you get into 1942, and some of the Panzer IVs are starting to get the, uh... The uh, Panzer I almost disappeared, and I think 1942... Ooh! Got one knocked out. Excellent. Uh, some of the Panzer IVs start getting the longer barreled 75mm in, uh, 1942. Late 1942, I think. Or mid-1942? I don't know exactly. Anyway, rambling. I should fight the battle. Doing reasonably effectively so far. That looks like attempts at enemy re return fire, so the reverse, this, the slope there seems to be working. Can you see the enemy? You can. Okay, that's a good position for you then. I have some mortars up here and enemy infantry in sight. Uh, oh, how much lead should I give it? Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait for an opportune moment to use that. Oh, uh, I just love the Panzer one. Just fondness for the underdog. It is it is an effective tank. It, it's not going to be effective against fortifications or other tanks, but it's perfectly effective against infantry, and most of what it's facing most of the time is going to be infantry. Okay, so we've taken out three enemy tanks so far, and this is what we see down there. Uh, so far, I was expecting an artillery barrage to start out with. But, uh, glad there hasn't been. We haven't lost any AT guns yet. We lost any AT gun crew members. We have. Let's replenish some of those. Uh, they... okay, yes. That is inside your envelope. You may now fire on that tank. Oh. Yeah, it's Panzer one. We can take that out from here. Alright. Your time to shine, AT... AT rifle. Nice close range target, even got a side profile. Oh bugger. Are you hitting? Come on, that's a big target. A tank at 100 meters, I don't know what the angular size of that is, or the angular width is, but it's big enough that there's no way you should be missing that. 
Oh, did we knock out a tread? I saw a hit on the tread. No. Ooh, got some frontal penetration there. A hole through the transmission that might have immobilized it. I might have inflicted some crew casualties. Oh, yeah, I should bring some mortars down on their infantry. And... About there-ish. There'll still be some... I believe the area of effect is wide enough that'll get both fields. Ooh, okay, that thing cannot traverse because it only has one crew member. And I cannot feed infantry into crew slots forever. Okay, but so far... Oh, and uh, that one's taken care of with these. Hmm. If I take... Keep moving infantry into crew slots, I won't have any anti-personnel capability left, but, uh, yeah. I, I, tanks are the main threat at the moment. Taken out five tanks so far. That's doing good. Well, six if you count the one that uh, has now been abandoned. Well, abandoned, or all the crew have been killed. Combat mission, I'm pretty sure, would count all the crew have been killed as the tank has been knocked out. Or, well, I know War Thunder does. The combat mission. We'll see when I get when I get back around to combat mission. Probably a little unfair that I'm constantly comparing Theater of War to combat mission. There's a lot of games it's better than, that Theater of War is better than. And it does its own things better better than Combat Mission. Like aircraft. Oh, that Panzer IV has, has seen better days. That is... That turret has been chewed up. Starting to look a little this cheesy. Seven enemy tanks knocked out. Nope. Oh, okay, reinforcements. How to deploy the reinforcements? What have I got here? I have armored car, machine guns. It's good. If I'm yes, I need some good anti-personnel firepower. If I'm going to try to keep my AT guns in action by feeding the infantry into AT gun crew slots. So, yes, something with machine guns is good. Uh, TKS. Um, I have three TKSs. All of them are the 20mm variety, which is probably a little ahistorical. The, uh, the machine gun variant uh, would have been much more common by a wide margin. Yes, a couple of extra infantry sections. That's good. That's that's needed. Okay. So I'll have each truck. Okay, now this truck on the left and this one deploy on the right. There. I want the armored car to move forward. The TKS is... I will take a position... TKSs will take a position behind these trenches here. Oh, what what happened there? Okay, let's give it a smaller number of waypoints and stuff. What is going on? Oh. Want movement waypoints. Eh. Getting too many orders all at once there. Oh, uh I'll tell the infantry, you can open fire now if you wish. The enemy infantry are, are getting in close. Oh, I didn't give the mortars enough lead. 
But yeah, I was right that uh, the area of effect would be adequately wide. Did we just lose someone back right there? Uh, no, I was hitting there while aiming for something else, probably that anti-tank gun. Okay, none of my AT- oh, one of my AT guns is out of action. Alright, let's lead those guys in over there. That tank is inside effective range. Probably. Yeah, it's 50mm armor at all aspects, so... Let's target that tank. The AT rifle can be effective against that- oh my god! Focus on that one! Well, I feel like that could have gone better. Okay, do I have anything that has a shot? You have a shot. Take that tank out. Alright. Okay, uh, don't move any further forward. Let's reverse a little bit. Just... Ooh, okay, that's not good. Can you get him? These AT rifles are not terribly effective. Should have enough penetration at this range. It's a matter of the post-penetration effect. And if it gets through, it should be... A lot of steel fragments should be flying around on the inside. It's a small round. Come on, you can do it, you can do it. Can't do it. Okay. And I don't think I can get any of these guys back to pick up this AT gun. They'll, they'll get shot in the backs long before they get there. Better leave them in position to do some anti-personnel work. The infantry are a threat. Yes, and, uh, not neglect. Okay, so we want to detach the AT gun and disembark crew. And I can do one of two things with this AT gun. Set it up in position back here, or push it forward to try and reinforce, reinforce the front main line there. Oh, I've lost the crew on this gun. I've taken out eight enemy tanks so far. Okay, this uh, section has arrived. I think I'm going to have them reman that AT gun. And possibly... Oh, what happened here? Oh, that TKS moved forward. I didn't move, order that TKS to move that far forward. Why did it move that far forward? Eh... Crew on this one is alright. I think I should probably... Hmm, should I pull it back? It's doing such good work in its current position, though. Right, I don't want to get some crew members on this one and pull it back to somewhere where it can continue fighting effectively. Hmm. Definitely past time to, to pull the survivors of this line back. I don't think they can pull back anymore. They'll get shot in the backs as soon as they leave those trenches. Um. I guess... 
continue to fight and die in position for the defense of Poland. Um, I suppose, yeah, it's your... No one will blame you if you surrender at this point. There's not really anything I can do to save you. So I leave you guys to your fates. Awful as that sounds. But yeah, okay. Um, get some crew members... Okay, gun's been detached. I want four crew members on it immediately. And the rest of the section... Anyone else? Get into the trench. Driver, you also get out of the truck, grab grab your rifle, get into the trench. There is no further work to be done as a driver. Oh, you don't have a weapon. Okay, well, we might as well get back in that truck then. You don't have a weapon. You, you don't have a rifle. Uh, not much point trying to use you as an infantryman. And let's make sure you are... Oh! Oh god. Don't... Why Why are you moving forward? You'll get killed by the enemy tanks. Okay. I should still have two TTSs, right? It's that one, which I just made sure is not going to move forward without permission. Uh... You... Go back to... Okay, there's the second one. Uh, since I no longer have a TKS on the left flank, because it moved forward... Uh, I'm going to have this one push forward. Well, yeah, take up the, uh, the flank-facing position there by that house there. This AT gun. Get into uh, those bushes there. Infantry. Get... Uh, oh god, I lost that AT gun there. Well, maybe I should have pulled it back. That's unfortunate. Yeah, that plan of having uh, having it do side shots as the enemy tanks go by, that did not work out. I should have just had it augment the front-facing firepower. Thought I was being clever! Well, keep it simple, stupid. Right, can you not move back? Why aren't you moving back? Move! Run away! Maybe you need some simpler pathfinding instructions. Oh, no, don't, don't stop to shoot. I'm just tell you to hold. Okay. I mean, that machine gun was nice to have while it lasted. I hope it took out some enemy infantry. I'm seeing some personnel casualties here. I'm going to call them casualties, because I have no idea if they're killed or wounded, because this uh, game does not distinguish. Most games do not distinguish between killed and wounded, so it's hardly a mark against it that it doesn't make the distinction uh, it would be a pro if it did make the distinction it's not a con that it doesn't. 
Now can you be effective in that position or should I immediately pull you back? Mm. Might still get knocked out even if I do pull you back. Would you be in a more effective position to knock out enemy tanks? Yeah, push. Yeah, pull that thing back over this way. It should be able to knock out tanks as it as they crest over the hill here, and it means these infantry here. Oops, let's uh, make sure they don't go running off. Not abide independent thought among my uh, pixel troopin. I mean, that's not entirely true. In some games with a reasonable AI, uh, them having uh, some the a the uh, individual troops and uh, subcommands having being able to make independent decisions is not the worst thing. Okay, yeah. Uh, tempting as it is to sit in place and shoot the targets that are showing themselves right now, I think it'll be more advantageous to have it push, move back, and take up a position in one of these bushes here. Yeah. Displace back. Be no point trying to have you hold the forward defenses anymore. Back, pull back. Wait, uh, oh, what did I do with that truck driver? Uh, presumably it's the one that doesn't have a rifle. Oh, there you are. Get back in your truck. I have a job for you. I want you to, uh, rapidly move that AT gun. Okay. AT gun is behind the crest of the ridge. Ooh, trees are falling. Those tanks are coming over quick. You... If I am placed you well, do you have a clear line of fire? Okay, uh... There's, there's not time to move you as far back as I would like. Yeah, they're coming over too quick. Oh god, there's four of them all at once. Precisely the kind of dilemma you want to, uh... Come on. Rotate. Rotate left. There, it's rotating. Good. Hasn't spotted. Okay, yeah, it would have been more effective if I just left him in position. Okay, get a good shot on that one. You might as well stop. Okay, you guys. Get ready to, uh, take over. Oh, yeah. Shouldn't have gotten the truck driver back in the truck. Come to think of it, what happened to the other truck? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's... That's unfortunate. I mean, the trucks being knocked out were probably always inevitable, but the drivers didn't have to die in their trucks. Aim, aim at, aim at the tank, aim at the tank. Hit. Oh. You at least get some shots off. Really. Okay. Uh, this is not going well. This is not going well at all. Come on, 
back there. Quickly as you can. Got TKS there. Oh, what have I done with the other TKS? Uh, where's the other one? Is it already dead? If so, where's its... Where's the wreck? There it is. Okay, that's... Yeah, okay, that's unfortunate. Okay, that is all of my... Oh, I still have some AT firepower. Are you shooting? Are you in action? Yeah, butter. Okay, well, let's keep pouring men onto that AT again. suppose any of you... Yeah, none of you have any AT grenades of any sort. The Russians had AT grenades. But you don't. Because, yeah, this... this would be a very dangerous position for that tank to be in, to knock the treads off from here. And, you know, even though you don't have any anything to actually hurt the tank with, it can't see you, much less shoot at you in that position. But it's backing up. Oh. The T-Gun should be back in action. Here we got three crew members back on it. Can we do a little bit more damage to the Germans? Knocked out eight tanks. That's that's a bad day for the Germans. We've we've hurt them. We've punished them a lot. But could we do a little bit more damage? One more tank. We just knock out one more tank. Or that that armored car. Can we take out that armored car? Oh no! All we've got left are high explosives. Oh no! It's got an APHE. Yes. Focus on the enemy vehicles. Kill that Panzer IV. That armored car. Yeah, Panzer IV. Panzer IV. Kill the Panzer IV. Okay. And that finishes us. I don't think I have anything left. Yeah. I am forced to fight to the last man here. Okay. Well, one of these days I'm going to start winning these. It's not historically inaccurate that I'm losing all of these so far. I am facing the uh, uh, the um, the brunt of the enemy offensive thus far, but yeah, I did well. Got numerous wrecked Panzers on the field. So uh, what remains of the force opposing us is probably combat and effective at this point. They're going to have to rotate another unit in to take over the offensive. So, yeah. This has not been an ineffective defense here. I am, I am not unhappy. I could have done better. But I am not unhappy with the, with the results here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all objectives failed. We didn't manage to repulse the enemy. But okay. Enemy lost 55 personnel and 8 tanks. I lost 66 personnel. 66 uh, soldiers lost. 
Uh, it says I lost two artillery pieces. It's not counting the ones that uh, are, are still technically intact, but the crews for them have been lost. Um, so I think that should be five AT guns that I've lost. Enemies lost... or I, I have lost three tanks. Tankettes, really, is what I've lost. And three other vehicles. Uh, two of those were soft vehicles, the trucks. And one of those was the armored car. So, yeah. Um, another battle in the defense of Poland in the very first days of World War II. We'll be getting more of that uh, coming up soon. <laughs>